Fort Edmonton Park is actually a representation of four periods of time from 1846 when we had a Hudson's Bay fur trading post and then our streets of 1885, 1905 and 1920 and we try to recreate life as it would have been. so I couldn't go after him and yeah, made off with a number of my supplies. The streetcar that you just saw go by has actually been in operation since 1908, so it's a real treasure to us. And cars and trucks have been donated to us, Model A's, uh, we have the Edmonton's first uh, tour bus is, is here with us in the park. So there's a multitude of things that have been restored, generally through volunteer support. Between the 1890s and 1930s, almost a quarter of a million Ukrainians settled in this east central part of Alberta, and this is the history that we show. We've moved over 30 buildings, including homes, businesses, churches, um, a school, from towns and farms in this part of Alberta. We've moved them here, restored them to what they looked like in that time period, and we have uh, role players, people in costume, that portray the actual pioneers. I, I think it's a fascinating history. Um, my great-grandparents came to Canada and I heard the stories when I was younger about living in a clay and log house with a clay oven inside. And I, I find that senior citizens appreciate it as well because they can say, oh, you know, I remember that. And they explain to their grandchildren how it might have worked. Elk Island started out in 1906 as Canada's first wildlife refuge for large mammals, specifically the elk and uh, we have a, a large plains bison herd as well. Right now, we're in the middle of their mating season. The bulls engage in, in, in displays, one to another, to establish dominance. Eventually, a pecking order of those is established, and, and, and of course, the dominant animal um, has the breeding privileges, but he's not above being challenged, and, and if he's gathering a harem, it takes a lot of his time and energy to, to keep this harem together. Um, and he's kept from feeding and all that sort of thing. So he becomes very irritable. But for 80 years, Elk Island was, uh, was a place where fire didn't occur. If it did occur, it was an all-out battle to stop it, whether it was from a lightning strike or from uh, a careless camper. Um, we, f we put out every fire. And in this environment that at one time was, was uh, woodland and, and open prairie meadow, uh, we now have a closed forest. In order to restore the habitats and natural diversity of the park, fire was reintroduced into the ecosystem, pushing back the aspen forest and allowing the native species to regain their foothold. Jasper National Park is part of the Rocky Mountain ecosystem. It protects many wildlife species, and since the animals are not being hunted, they can often be seen by the roadside. People are running across the highways with their cameras and also approaching wildlife too close to them. They'll want a picture of their, their family or their children in front of a, a bear or an elk. And uh, these animals are extremely dangerous and unpredictable and they feel threatened uh, and you get too close to their space and uh, you, can, you can be injured. And over 100 animals get killed annually from people who did not obey the speed limit signs. So please pick up the guidelines on viewing wildlife and other park activities from the park warden's offices. It would protect the wildlife, it would protect the people themselves and they would have a much more enjoyable holiday if they could just get that information and, and follow the guidelines. At the end of that valley, you'll see the Yellowhead Range going across. Yellowhead Range is named for a Métis guide who is part Iroquois and part French. This country has experienced four major ice ages. In Alberta, the most westerly of Canada's three prairie provinces, the Athabasca Glacier and Columbia Icefield 
once formed part of an enormous ice sheet that crowned and carved the landforms you see behind me here in the Rocky Mountains. At one time, the Athabasca Glacier flowed north to the present site of Jasper and then joined up with other glaciers that flowed east to the prairies and south past Calgary. And the Columbia Icefield itself is a, just over 100 square miles. And it is the mother of all rivers because it does flow into or creates water for three different rivers. The Saskatchewan, the Columbia, and the Athabasca. And each of those rivers flow into three different oceans. So it is a hydrological center of North America. Uh, with the Saskatchewan flowing eventually into uh, Hudson's Bay, the Athabasca into the Arctic, and the Columbia into the Pacific. The tourism, the Athabasca Glacier, began in the late 40s with the highways close to the glacier. People can come here by motor coach, by car. We have uh, 56 passenger, multi-tired, uh, multi all-terrain vehicles, they're called. We call it the snow coach. It's actually made in Calgary by a Canadian company. We take them out onto the surface of the glacier. And that's something that most people don't get a chance to do ever. For more information on today's destinations, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.